Host Gator versus GoDaddy. In today's video, I want to compare these two web hosting companies so that you can make the best decision to find out which platform is going to be the best for your online website. What I'm going to do is simply compare the features, pricing, and then finally, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you my personal opinion, aka the conclusion of these two platforms. Now, it's not going to be as simple as black and white. Some features might be better for you if you're trying to build a simple website or maybe you're trying to do a lot of stuff at one platform, then the other one might be better. So that's what I'm going to cover in today's video. Now, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. It's not sponsored. I won't leave affiliate links. So there's no benefit in promoting one platform over the other. So all I would like for that in return is a like on the video for the almighty YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much if you liked the video and let's just get started right away. Let's get started with HostGator. Now, HostGator has been in the game for a while. If I go to hosting, we can go with shared website builder and then WordPress hosting. I'm going to go with WordPress hosting because over 35% of all websites are hosted through WordPress. So I'm going to cover that in today's video. That's going to be the main element. Now, the HostGator uh, platform is really good and they've got a lot of different options. Now, if I scroll down, let's start off with the pricing plan. So it starts up at $6 per month and then $8 and then $10. Now that is pretty affordable. If you compare it to other platforms, it comes out to be roughly the same or at the cheaper end of it. So the pricing is definitely good. It's pretty affordable. It's also scalable. So if you can get started with the $6 a month one, and then you want another website or more visitors, you can easily scale up to the standard plan or the business plan. So really easy to scale up. Now, if you click right here, let's figure out if we can get to see more or if this is just it, I'm pretty sure it is. And yes, it actually is. So if we take a look at this with the cheapest plan, which is going to be $6, you can get one site, then $8 is two sites, and then $10 is going to be free sites. Now, what I don't like about this specific uh, web hosting company, but that's going to be the case with a lot of web hosting companies is that they're going to put a cap on the visits per month. So with a specific plan, you can only get a certain amount of views, uh, views, visitors, my bad. I'm too into YouTube nowadays. Visitors, of course. That is pretty annoying in my opinion, but at the end of the day, there's not that much you can do because a lot of companies are now starting to do it because of course, it's a good business model. Now, if you scroll down, you can see with each plan, you're gonna get a free domain, a free email, and you can see all the features here. There's not that much of a difference in the features apart from the fact that you can only get one side here and then two and three side there. And that is pretty much it. So the only limitations are within the specific pr uh, plan is the amount of visitors or the amount of websites. Apart from that, you'll get the same features with every single plan. Now, what I like about HostGator is that they offer a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you're not sure what is this gonna be for you, you can still buy it and then you will have a 45 day money back guarantee. They also have a 99.9% uptime and a one click WordPress install, making it really easy for beginners and your website won't be um, I mean, your website will be available 99.9% .9 of the time, which is awesome. Now, if we then compare that to GoDaddy, we can also scroll down, go to WordPress because we want WordPress web hosting and then take a look at the um, pros. If I then scroll down, we can take a look at the pricing plan for this. You can see it's going to start off at $7 a month. Then we've got $10, $13 and then $16. Now you can partner with WooCommerce on that, which is pretty good. Now, if we take a look at what's good about GoDaddy is that all of this is all in one, like it's an all in one convenience of like just web hosting, website building, and then your domain registration as well. So this platform covers it all, which is also why you're going to pay a little bit more, but it makes it feature rich and it's a decent price still considering what you're going to get hosting all of the stuff in one platform. The prices are really good. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see that you can get a free SSL certificate for the duration of your hosting. Now that is pretty much the, uh, the secure lock on your website so that your website doesn't look sketchy and you can get domain for a year. Uh, I mean, not for a year, you can get a domain, which is $12 per year, per year of value. My bad. You can get a business email for just the first year. Normally that's going to cost you about $24 and then the basic plans, and this is where it gets interesting are the same as HostGator. So you can see for the basic plan, you can get 30 GB and then 25 K visitors. If we compare that to, HostGator, you can see 
that for their basic plan, you can get uh, 100K visits per month. And here, GoDaddy, it's only 25K. This is the one for 100K, gonna cost you $4 more than on HostGator. Now that's what I said earlier in the video as well. It's pretty annoying that you must pay more and then they put a, they put a cap on the monthly visitors. That's what I don't like. But like I said earlier, most platforms are gonna do that nowadays because it just works and it's a great business model. So you can blame them for that. But you'll see that on here, you'll get all of these basic features and then depending on how much you're gonna pay, you'll get more features. Like I said, GoDaddy is great if you're trying to do advanced stuff because they've got all of it in one place and they've got more advanced features. Now, like I said, one of the downsides on GoDaddy is the pricing. It's a little bit more expensive than other platforms. And if you compare that to HostGator, you can already see that's pretty true because all of the plans on here are cheaper than the plans on GoDaddy. So that's definitely, I mean, not like a downside uh, specifically per se, but it's not great either. Now, what about the features and then the performance? So on GoDaddy, you can get a free domain. On HostGator, you cannot. So on GoDaddy, you can get a free domain. On HostGator, you cannot. I mean, both are controlled by the control panel. That's a C panel. So that's actually really good. You can get free, backs up, free backups. The disk space is unlimited on both platforms. And then the uptime is very similar as well. On GoDaddy, it's 99.97%. And on HostGator, it's 99.99%. So both like uptimes are really good. In fact, you can see that with most platforms, it's about the same. So in terms of that, the performance is pretty good, pretty average, but average in this case is still really good. Now, so far you can see that HostGator is cheaper and they also have a lot of good features. So which platform is the better one? Like I said in the intro, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're a beginner that hasn't like that doesn't have that much experience, I would definitely go with HostGator because HostGator has cheap plans and they've made it really easy to get started. Now on GoDaddy, it's a bit more complicated and all over the place, which is great if you know how to like work with that. However, like I said, if you're a beginner, if you're just new, then uh, HostGator is probably better because the features are still really good and it's really easy to use. So HostGator is simpler to navigate and work with than GoDaddy itself and it also has a slightly better uptime by only like 0.002%, but still it's pretty significant. So if you're the beginner that's just trying to build a simple website, I highly recommend you choose HostGator. However, if you're trying to do more advanced stuff and you wanna have a lot of it in just one single place, then GoDaddy is gonna be better for you. The reason why is because as you can see, they do offer a lot of different features in one single platform. They've got domains, they've got websites, professional email, online stores, Microsoft 365, WordPress, website security, hosting. You can see they have all of this stuff. They've got a website builder, they've got templates that you can just start using. So you can see that GoDaddy itself is kind of like a whole platform on its own. HostGator is kind of too, however, it's still limited to like compared to GoDaddy. So to sum this up guys, if you're trying to get started, both options are really good. G uh, HostGator is the cheaper one. So if you're on a tight budget, I would go with um, HostGator. You can see GoDaddy, whereas the pricing is a little bit more expensive. That does also give you more features. However, if you're a beginner, I would still go with HostGator because it's easier to use, it's cheaper, and it's just a better option for beginners. If you're trying to do more advanced stuff, and you wanna have everything in one single place, GoDaddy is gonna be great because if you're not on a tight budget, you can still pretty much buy all of these plans and you'll get the best features out here and you'll get all of this in just one platform. There we go. So yeah, that is pretty much gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you do, then make sure you go ahead and leave a like on the video. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. And then I'll see you hopefully in the next video. You can also click on the video on the screen to watch more comparison videos on different web host companies. I'll see you there.